Hello everyone and welcome to my BUS 440 students at California Baptist. We're going to go through a quick illustration of how to use Excel's Goal Seek in doing a, a simple problem. And this mirrors the problem that's in your appendix in Chapter 1. So let's see what the setup looks like. Now I'm in Excel uh, 2010 and so you see these tabs across the top here and the Home tab is should be pretty familiar to you. And you may have an earlier version of Excel but again these these tabs that you see at the top should be very similar. Now what I've done and kind of centered it in the middle of the screen here so you can see it is set up the problem and we've got a few inputs that are given and first thing is three thousand dollars of fixed costs and remember fixed costs from your accounting learning were costs uh, such as um, the uh, property tax on a building uh, maybe the salaried people that aren't paid on a piece rate but those costs will go on and be incurred whether you are producing and selling anything or producing and selling a lot so you've got fixed cost of three thousand dollars as you're making this product, whatever it is, the variable cost on a per unit basis are $2. So that's another key input. And remember, variable costs are things like the direct materials that go into the manufacture of the product. Now this product, the marketing people are telling us, is selling for $5 uh, each. So obviously, every time you sell a unit, you're incurring you're getting the five dollars from the customer you're incurring two dollars of variable cost and then that difference between the five dollars and two dollars remember that's called contribution margin and that's going to cover these fixed costs um, so so you want to sell enough units in order to at least cover the fixed cost and then you're at what's called the break-even point and this allows us then to get into the formula and, and to say what is that break-even point? Well we're going to have a calculation here for our total revenue and in this cell I'm going to put a calculation for the total cost and then at break-even the profit will be zero. Now well you know we could have a loss if the if the if we're not covering if the revenue is not covering the total cost or we could then exceed total cost and, and have something left over and be what they call in the black. So how are we going to calculate revenue? Well, these are uh, these calculations are going to be dependent on the input. So revenue is simply going to be a per unit selling price. So for the formula, I'll put my equal sign, and I'll say I'm going to sell each unit at five dollars, and then I'll put the multiplication symbol in here. And you can see up on the formula bar what's going on up here. And then I'm going to have to sell however many. And in this case, it's going to be the volume. So I'm going to click on this cell, and and we're going to make the assumption for this problem that we're going to sell everything that we make. So then I'll hit enter. Now obviously I have zero because I have not yet put any value into that production volume. Now that's the going to be the key because the question is how much do we have to produce and therefore sell in order to break even. Let's just make up a number. Let's just make up 579 units and see what happens. Well, obviously, then that gives us a revenue of 579 times five dollars, and there's your 28.95. Now, from a cost perspective, the formula is a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. The first thing we need to do to say what are our total costs in this scenario is say, well, we know the total cost will include these fixed costs of $3,000. So I'll go up and grab that number. To the fixed cost, I'm going to add what will be my variable cost. So now I've got to have this other calculation that will say each variable cost is costing $2 a unit multiplied by the number of units. In this case, I had just plugged in a number of 579, closed my parentheses, hit enter, and my total costs are 41.58. Now profit, defined as revenue minus total cost, is a negative. I'm at a lost position of 1,263. Now this is the essence of the problem. They are asking what volume do we have to have? If it, wh what does this number need to be in order for this number to be what? To be zero at break even. And that's what we're going to do with Goal Seek. Now go back up and look at these tabs and let's go to the data tab. Okay. Now what you're going to do on the data tab is you'll use a drop down under this what if analysis. So if I click that drop down, now you see the Goal Seek. So I'll click Goal Seek. Let me move this over a little bit. And this is what's called a dialog box in Excel. 
Now what it does is saying I'm going to set a cell whatever cell is is my target what am I trying to do here well in this case I'm trying to set this cell that profit number now what did we just say it needs to be zero at break even so I'll input the number zero in my target value now if I want cell G21 right here where my cursor is to be zero how do I drive it to zero? Now I'll click inside this box by changing cell and remember we said we want to know what the volume is. So I'll click on that cell which is G12 and then here's what's going to happen. When I click OK and you're going to have to, it'll, it'll be almost instantaneous, Excel will go through the iterative calculations by changing this volume in order to drive this formula to give a result of zero. So watch what happens. Click OK and there you have your answer. It's changed it to a thousand in order to get my revenue and my cost exactly equal. Now remember we had plugged in a number less than a thousand and we had a loss so it, it stands to reason that that break-even point would have been something higher than the number we had previously plugged in. But the cool thing about it is in a uh, very, very short period of time, Excel has given us the result. So just click OK to accept the result, and there you have it. So hopefully this has been fairly straightforward and, and exposed you to a very powerful tool called Goal Seek in Excel that you can use in a lot of applications, in financial applications, uh, going forward. So congratulations on learning this tool, and I look forward to learning or teaching you some new things later on. Thank you.